So looking around here on the uh, head frame, the metal is stamped with uh, Eastern, if I can find it, right there. And uh, Justin was saying this company was based out of New, out of New Jersey. So, and the rivets um, indicate how old this is, because apparently Justin was telling me, explaining that the uh, rivets were used first, and then they started using bolts later on from about the 1930s or so. So, this is pre-1930s. And here's another Eastern. Uh, Insignia. Hard to see that. There it is. Okay, so this is a triple compartment shaft. Over there on the left, a cart would have come up. Here in the center, a cart would have come up. And over here on the right, you can see the, man the manway ladder. And so uh, this sh vertical shaft is 1100, 1100 feet deep. And unfortunately, it's clogged with a lot of wooden debris. But uh, yeah, it goes down 1,100 feet, so it's, it was a big mine. <laughs> and uh, it's a cactus growing on the head frame. And this is looking up at the. This is one of the biggest head frames I've ever seen. It's got like a, a, a couple floors, a couple stories, and then uh, up here. Oh yeah, so there's a. <laughs> There's a, uh, a cactus, a cactus growing on the metal head frame. Let me zoom into that. That's so strange. A spare sheave wheel up there too. I never noticed that. Just laying up there. Yeah, there's a cactus growing on the metal head frame. And then we're, I'm right underneath the uh, sheave wheel, looking up. I'm right underneath the head frame, looking directly up at the uh, top. There's a sheave wheel up there and then a spare one somewhere. It's just laying there on the on the platform, you see it? Oh yeah, it's laying on the platform. Let me zoom in. You can see it laying there on its side. Um, wow. Right there in the center of the frame. That's the spare sheave wheel. So we're gonna take this rock right here and toss it down the far left compartment, which seems to be less yeah plugged up and we'll see if we can hit, hit bottom this looks like the clear shot right here yeah it's plugged it's plugged yeah. that's what it looks like over here yeah it's plugged it collapsed in on itself about 100 feet down uh, about 60 70 feet down yeah, that didn't sound very deep yeah yeah it collapsed so yeah, we're just talking to Justin about this collar on this vertical shaft. It's it's made out of concrete, which probably meant that the ground was very unstable, and that's probably why it's collapsed in on itself. Not too far down there, but I've only seen a concrete collar maybe once or twice in 14, 15 years. They're usually made out of wood, so they must have felt this was really unstable, and uh, that's why they used concrete instead of regular lumber. So here is a cyanide container. You can see on the side there the stenciling. Aero brand cyanide, American Cyanide Company, made in Canada. That's kind of ironic. But I guess the cyanide would come in this container. It looks like a dog, it looks like a dog house. But we think it was probably in powder form. We don't know, but I guess I guess they shipped it inside this this container that looks like a doghouse. So interesting. I never saw one of those before. And uh, this head frame, this was more like a little mill structure here. Some processing went on here, some crushing maybe. So here's looking up at the uh, some of the timbers. So we're hiking up this old mining road, and we noticed right here a cactus that's blooming. Check that out. 
and we're going to continue up that way. Okay, so we're making our way down through this forest and uh, towards an another abandoned mine site. And here is a uh, what we think might have been some kind of kiln for doing assay work. It's got very thick walls and uh, might have been used for assaying the ore. There's probably an exhaust vent right there. But we just came down through all of that. It's been slow going, and uh, but hopefully this mine will be worth it. It's supposed to be pretty extensive. Here's a side shot of that ore bin as we're making our way up this waste rock pile to where the adits are. You can see Justin up there. And let's... Let's get up there and check it out. So here is a metal pot at this abandoned mine site. And over there is what looks like a rather large uh, dish or plate turned upside down. So up here on the waste rock pile is a collapsed, might have been a, a workshop or something. It's a pretty big building. And then over here is the portal with a homemade gate that we can get past on the right. See that gap there that erosion has caused? That's how we'll gain entry. So this is just right inside the portal. Some timbering and then it stops. And there's Justin at the portal, kind of in silhouette because of the sunlight. See all the flies in here though. Uh, I see ore cart tracks up here, but it's a straight shot. So here on the floor, you see the wooden cross ties for the ore cart tracks, but the tracks pick up right up here in front of me, not too far ahead here. So they didn't remove all the tracks. These cross ties are in pretty good condition. Check that out. It's a straight shot. Let me zoom in down there so you can see. You can see what I'm seeing. I'm not sure what's down there. Hard to tell. It looks like it just keeps going. Let's go check it out. Okay, it's starting to smell a little damp and musty in here, and the tracks are turning to the right. So it was a straight shot. There's Justin in the portal, and uh, there's a wooden door here. This is probably a dynamite storage locker <clears throat> on the left. Oh, wow. Somebody's shoe. Well, if this was dynamite storage, it's uh, it's got a big hole in the floor. Check this out. They probably stored dynamite back there, but um, that's a very steeply inclined winds that we determined goes down 50 feet, probably to a lower stoked area. And uh, I'm just wondering, see there's four or five boards placed across that hole, but notice how the third one from the left has a gap in it. I hope nobody didn't step on that and it broke and down they went. That's the danger of these false floors. You just don't know how sturdy these boards are. And uh, wow, I hope nobody stepped on that and 
went down there. That's a pretty steep incline. But no dynamite in this one. And uh, let's keep checking out the rest of the mine. We're headed that way. Oh, we got a split here. There's a Y intersection with the ore cart tracks. See that? Tunnel to the left with a lot of curves in it. And then this tunnel curves around the same direction. I bet these meet up. This is probably just a big pillar. Let's take the right side. Well, no, this is a dead end. It doesn't connect up. Very interesting. But you can, I think you can see here the vein. Right here where my light is. Because I think that's what they were following. But let's go back to the intersection and take the left branching tunnel. <clears throat> So the pipe here on the left would have been for air or water for the drills. We see this all the time in mines. There's always a pipe next to the ore cart tracks. And that's what that was used for. Now here's more shoes. How strange is that? Those are kind of like, looks like a boot. Okay, we're getting, it's getting kind of messy up here. And on the left here, you can see uh, what might have been a fault line. See that? That smooth surface, contact zone, they sometimes call it. So they were digging out this white stuff, I guess. Okay, it's getting a little uh, sketchy in here. A little damp. And now we're entering kind of a stoped area. See that? They call that a stope. When the miners remove a, a large body of ore, it leaves behind this narrow void that they call a stope. And uh, if the stope breaks through to the surface, then it's, it's an uh, open stope, and you can see daylight. But that's not the case here. So what we don't know about the stopes is if the stope continues below us. There was that incline winds further back in the tunnel we passed. So there are lower levels. So this all right here in front of me, it's covered with wooden debris, could be a false floor. And uh, like right over here, it looks like there's a, maybe a drop off. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think this is a false floor and I'm not going to go down there. Uh, but looking up into the stope, you can see all the, how narrow that is. And those support timbers up there are called stalls. And that was used to, for support and bracing. And yeah, I, uh, what I'm standing on here, all these wood fragments, feels real spongy and soft. So I'm going to get off of this because I think it's a false floor. I don't know. We'll wait until Justin gets down here and see what he thinks. So back here at this junction, I missed this on the way out. There's a, an active flow stone happening right here. You can see the little droplets. And that's... That's a pretty nice formation right there. Like a little wedge. And then right here, some nice colors, pink, green, and flowstone. You can see them hanging down from the ceiling. 